Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're talking part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus. As you know, I am really, really stoked about this. And we are continuing on to an awesome result. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right, I will, I will stop the music until the end. I, I really need, somebody needs to like stop me. Okay, so just to remind you. So from part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that we can find the antiderivative of a function f by taking this definite integral. So this is something that we talked about in the last video, went through great length to prove this. There's this connection now between antiderivatives and derivatives, which is pretty amazing. And one thing I just want to kind of remind you of, there's there's something kind of in the in the background here of like we still don't totally get how are anti or how are definite integrals different from indefinite integrals because we I've talked about it at length in other videos the just the general form of an antiderivative would be like this f of x plus a c there's always a plus c here right right so how is this connected then to what we know about antiderivatives so the whole point of this now is to kind of button all this up. So the idea is we're going to now go deeper with this idea. And the question here that's going to kind of rule everything is what is f of b minus f of a? So just a reminder, my f of x, my f of x is still this little function here, right? So this is my function. And we've talked about kind of at length how to think about this. So if I've got this, this function, so here's my f of t. So I've got this closed interval from a to b. So here's my a and here's my b. So what I wanna recommend that you do just to kind of wrap your head around this, draw out what this actually means. What is f of b and what is f of a? And maybe draw those out separately. So let me give myself some space. So I've got my, my graph here, and actually I wanna give myself just a little bit more space and I wanna just replicate this graph. So just to help you wrap your head around what this is trying to get at now, I want you just to do this, do this twice and just draw the two graphs. So for this first one, so this one's gonna be f of b, and then this second one's gonna be f of a. So just draw those two graphs separately for a second so you can kind of wrap your head around what actually is the visual here. Maybe pause and then hit play when you're ready. So for f of f of b, so if I've got this graph here from a to b, so to actually see what is f of b, it's literally then going, it's finding this area from here to here, right? It's talking about this whole little region in here. That's what this, this graph is. And then what is f of a? So normally I have some x and x falls like someplace out here. But if I just wanna say what is f of a? So let's see, maybe even green isn't the right choice. Uh, maybe I'll, let me let me actually make this, let me, let me erase this. I'm gonna do my f of a in this gold color. So my f of a is just gonna be a on top of itself, right? So I've just made this, this line nice and dark so you can see it. So just by looking at this now, this area, it's on top of itself. What what does this equal? This will equal zero, right? There's gonna be no area here. So we get this, this kind of interesting result then. So let me clear, clear some space. So if I wanna follow the actual kind of, you know, math of this now, now that I've, I've kind of inspected this visually, so to actually plug in what this is getting at, so here's my f of b, here's that first function. And then here's my f of a. And I know what this f of a is, right? We already said this equals zero. So check this out then. Um, this says then that my f of b minus my f of a this is what the definite integral equals. And so we've had this like question kind of looming this entire time of, well, how do I actually compute this? What do I do with these limits of, of uh, integration? How do I finish this? And this is actually telling us how. If you're trying to calculate the area, 
you find the antiderivative and then you literally just plug in the limits of integration into the antiderivative. This is telling us how to actually evaluate a definite integral and it is so easy. Yay! <laughs> okay, so maybe I need to explain a little bit more now of, of why, why this is so great and, and why this makes everything so easy. Okay, so let's start by first stating this theorem. So here's the actual statement of the theorem, and it's literally what we were just kind of looking at and, and worked up to on our own. So if f is continuous over this closed interval, and, f, and big F is any antiderivative of little f on this closed interval, then to evaluate the definite integral of this, you find the antiderivative, and then you, you basically plug in the, the limits of integration. Okay, so I want to show you just like a couple of examples now of, of why this is so great. Okay, so here's this, this first example. And so what you're going to do is you're going to find the antiderivative of 2x, which we know is just x squared. And I'm, I'm going to write the, the plus c in gold here just to kind of, um, you, you'll see what happens to it. So I want us to just kind of track it and watch it. And so what I'm going to do after I've, I've written this out I'm going to put a, th this is like a notation thing, so I'm going to put these square brackets around this, and then I'm going to rewrite 1 to 3. So what this does is this tells us, hey, I found the antiderivative, but I haven't plugged in the limits of integration yet, so this is my next step is to plug this stuff in. And so now I'm going to plug 3 and 1 into this, and so according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, so first I plug in the 3, so this is 3 squared plus c. I don't know what the c is, but I don't know. Let's, let's just let's just keep going with it. And then I've got 1 squared plus c. So look at what happens to the c's. The c's actually drop out. These drop out. And you're just left with 3 squared minus 1 squared, which we know is 9 minus 1, so this whole thing equals 8. And that's that's the answer. This would be the this would be the area of 2x from 1 to 3. And you didn't have to worry about the c's, you don't even need them. So if you're talking about definite integrals, the c is not actually needed. So this c here, you wouldn't normally you don't write it when you have a definite integral. And you can see just by looking at this how much easier this is than doing some of those crazy Riemann sums. And it's even easier than trying to graph this out. So if I if I actually wanted to, to look at the graph of this, so maybe let's do that real quick. So here's the graph of 2x two, two from um, x equals 1 to x equals 3. So I just want to find this area then captured underneath the curve to the x-axis. So you might remember doing things with like area formulas. So if I first found the area of this guy. So the area of this, let's see, this is a, well, I guess this is actually a, uh, this is technically a square. I just don't have it to scale. So this is a width and a height of two. So this is two times two. So the area of this is four. And then to get to this area of this triangle, so if I take one half, so the base is two, and then the height is, let's see, one, two, three, four. The height is four. So the, the area of this triangle is 4. So the total area of this shape here is 4 plus 4, which equals 8. That is exactly what we found in this calculation here, right? So that's actually what this is kind of getting at, and that, that's why we like this so much. So now you have this super great, powerful tool. So let me give you one to try on your own. So here's one more definite integral. I have a video with like a lot more of these. I've got tons more videos with this, but just to kind of get you through the basics, go ahead and evaluate this. Try this one out, hit play when you're ready. So if I take just the antiderivative of cosine, that's sine. And so if you just have the one term, you don't have to put uh, square brackets around the whole thing. You can just put one singular square bracket. When you have more than one term, then you have to put square brackets around the whole thing. So this is just a, a little shortcut that you can use for your notation. Some people use this square bracket. 
Um, I actually, when, when I learned calculus, I, we had like this bar here. So I think it just kind of depends on the book, but um, I'll just, I'll draw this for now. So then all I have to do is just evaluate sine of pi over two minus sine of zero. And so then that's one minus zero. So this will just equal one. And then again, so then you could think of that as that is really the, the area captured underneath cosine of x to the x-axis. And so that's, that's really it. So that is this really great theorem that we have now that we get to use going forward. So it's, it's a great day. Okay, now we can have the music. Yes, yes, let's, you know, let's bring back the stick figures. Woo! Okay, <laughs> so I hope that you found this at least somewhat entertaining. But this is like a really great th day because um, it's just, it's everything that you've learned so far in calculus and it all comes back at, at once. So this video was really just focusing on the proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus. I have lots more where I show you how to evaluate other definite integrals and harder problems and all that stuff. So thank you for watching and I hope I see, I'll see you in another one. Bye.